Hello, Penny here. Today on my garden podcast... Mum, I'm gay. Oh, for God's sake! Why be happy when you can be normal? I took all the soil out of the hole. I put an item in a hole. Why's all the soil gone? There is some sort of pervasive... 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 Pervasive species. Let's get on with the show. Right, come with me. (laughs) That was very forthright, wasn't it? I'm on a bit of a mission. Um, I feel quite busy in my mind and a bit kind of energised. I've had a really good day. I had a really good night's sleep last night. And we're just walking towards a problem area, frankly. Um, I bought my husband some new gardening gloves. And they're rather excellent, so I've started stealing them and using them. And then, can I just can I just impart my knowledge and insight from recent experiences with gloves? I've got terrific gloves. Don't get me wrong, they're terrific. They're leather. They've got a soft back. They're really good with thorny stuff. I don't get pricked. It's great. They're they're real workmanlike, proper gloves. They've got a nice colour as well and a pattern. So I feel you know they're not, they're quite feminine as well. However. It's an open cuff. So, listen to this, gardener. When you next buy your next pair of gardening gloves, do ensure a closed cuff situation, which is what the husband's glove has got. The husband's glove, really rubbery and tough and all that, and then it's got this kind of knitted cuff. And the reason for that is, I can't tell you the number of times I've had to take my gloves off and tip out a load of soil, rogue soil that's gone in there from getting my hands involved. But with these hunky husband's gloves, it's a closed it's a closed situation. Right. <laughs> let's get on with the let's get on with let's get on with the show. Right, what are we doing? So let's just stop a minute. Right, okay. So if you come out the back of the house, you come out the back of the the house, the kitchen, through the extension, out through the big glass doors now. Very swish, lovely, can't beat them. And over to the right hand side is a bed. And it's got in it is nothing more than two amazing aces. One is lime green, vibrant lime green, and the other is burgundy. And I planted those together because I love the colourway of the lime green and the burgundy together. And the burgundy one is a little bit taller and that's the one, you know, furthest out. They're quite close together though, but I don't mind that. They're, get, they're getting along quite nicely. Oh my goodness, I brought those up from London with me when I moved 12 years ago. And this <laughs> this lime one, oh my gosh, it was in a pot. And I would say it was about a quarter of the size and it was going nowhere. And now, it's towering above me and the burgundy one I can't remember when I got that probably 10 years ago and I kept it in a pot and it's gone in the ground and it's shot up as well so trees are brilliant they do what you want them to do if you don't want them to grow very tall keep them in a pot if you want them to do what they naturally do stick them in the ground so there's two aces and then we have a bush I don't know what it is it's kind of lime green, orangey sort of thing. Do you know what? I think I'm going to get one of those apps that does identifying. We can have a bit of fun with that, can't we? And see if it actually can identify. Um, so those are the three main parts of this bed. Underneath the, the aces this year, loads and loads of bluebells. It looks like a little wooded dingly dell when you're looking out from the window, from the kitchen. And I think that's great. But what I don't like is this bush so what's going to happen and I've been plotting this for I'd say 18 months now um, a horticulturalist friend of mine like I've got loads I know one person who's done a course and she said the best thing to do when you're looking out of your window the place where you perhaps stare out of during the winter or the summer months you know we're having your morning coffee or a a toast or whatever where does your eye get led to? Where's the focal point? My focal point is actually my washing line. Uh, I'm not so sure that's a great thing, but it's also then this kind of vast shrub, bush, 
it's a bit boring. I mean, it's kind of nice, but it's like this massive ball of about two meters wide, like this massive orb. And I don't know what to do with it other than get rid of it. Kill it. Oh, it's not good, is it? But there's another reason. It's okay. I would keep it, but there's another more serious reason why I want to really get into this bed. And that is, there is some sort of pervasive, 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 per pervasive species in there. It's not um, Japanese knotweed. Don't say that too loudly if you're trying to sell your house. It's not Japanese knotweed. No, it's not that stuff. But Delia, my mum, has declared it to be an emergency area. And I take Delia's word to be true and it's it's like um like a t- seedling growth of like a little tree like an elm or something like that and i can't quite remember what she said it was but she identified it again an app might help with this i'll get back to you on that so what i'm keen to do is to eradicate or at least reduce this issue and i think that's going to have to happen by getting rid of this shrub which has been here for years and years and years. And also then rotivating, roticulating. What is it? Rotivating, getting the, getting it, getting deep under the soil. Because the roots on these buggers are tremendous and they snap really easily. So if you pull them, let's have a go actually. If you think, oh, I'll just pull up these weeds, you know, they snap off incredibly easily. But of course then their root system remains in the ground and you can't easily get to it i've tried digging them out in the past and the root system goes on and on and on and i mean it's very satisfying when you do actually pull them all out but absolutely riddled with this stuff this bed and what i thought was in what's inspired me are seeing all of these bluebells and the white bells if we can call them that or white bluebells i don't know um coming up underneath the trees and creating this kind of dingly dell wooded area it's really sweet so i want to make more of that aspect tidy it up a bit the edges are a bit raggedy and it's spilling out over pretty much half of the garden well, a third of the garden and i want to pare it back a bit and give us a bit more lawn space so when you do look out of the window and your eye catches the washing line it might then rest back on the bluebell area and in fact we could put other flowers in here and grass it over and it's a little bit more expansive then so we've got big plans and as hunky husband said over dinner this evening that's pretty much an all-day sunday job which means we're not going to do it now but we've been talking about it what i am going to do now is put in a fern underneath the aces underneath the aces I don't know what that is or where it's from, but it's something my dad might have sung. Joey, hello. Evening. He's having a little pot around. He's checking the perimeter fence of the property, making sure that all is well. He's a little excited because there was a big ginger cat that ran across the lawn a few hours ago and he saw it. Oh, seen a dandelion. Oh, there are. The roots on the dandelions are really long, aren't they? So you do have to dig those out. If you try and pull them out, that's it, you're done. Yep, there we go. I like carrots when they come out. So what I've got now is a fern. There is it, underneath the arches, underneath the thingy, very dried out. I've been exceptionally tardy with this. I got it out of the, do you remember me saying a couple of episodes ago that um, ex-partner, daughter's dad had bought me a, a basket in the one of the corners of the basket was this fern and I thought actually it will go better in the ground oh I might have just done it damage by leaving it out just with its roots showing the last few days so it's very dry and crispy can you hear that Joey thinks it's some sort of food he's looking at me expectantly anyway let's get it in the ground and see there are some other ferns along here as well so I know they do very well in fact they're lovely at this time of year aren't they they're curling they're curling outwards like coiled up and then they slowly begin to unfurl and uh, provide this wonderful and huge sometimes uh, display but you can't 
you can't really um, enjoy a fern in the winter, but non nonetheless, they're gonna, it's gonna go in. So, oh, actually I've got one here that's coming out the ground. Oh my, that's lovely. It's, oh gosh, on another one. Oh, that's brilliant. So, it just looks like nothing in the winter. It just completely dies back. And then you get these little curly, um, almost like the tail of, like the tail of a seahorse sort of unfurling almost. And it looks like nothing right now, but I know in a few months it's gonna take over quite a lot of space, which I think is great. Apparently ferns are really ancient. Oh, there's another one. What's been going on around here? So, um, this one's sticking up. Out the, oh yeah, they do. They've got this kind of um, base, haven't they, that sticks out a bit. Right, I'm gonna have to do something with this fern urgently. The one I've got in my hand, put it in the ground. It's got a funny root ball on it because it's been wedged in a box, basically. So it's got kind of box shaped right angle on one side and then Hmm, I think I'm gonna have to big, dig quite a big hole. Oh, you're just getting started, are you, Joey? He's digging at something. What are you digging at? Oh, Joey's brilliant. He does this kind of staring thing. If he sees like a worm or um, an earwig or something on the floor or, an, or even a f or an ant, he'll put his head right down and he'll be staring at it. I don't know which eye he's using. He's maybe using a bit of both. And he'll be really still watching something it's very cute so i'm going to dig a hole and get the bugger in the ground and we're back with a hole dug didn't think you really needed to hear the hole being dug <laughs> digged right so uh for oh the new spade it's fantastic it's uh really good at digging small holes for such things as repotting replanting and the fern has gone in beautifully, I have to say. So I'm gonna load in a watering can of water. Not because ferns need loads of water, but it has been out in the air for ages. And this is a really good way of getting your roots suckered into the soil and connecting with the soil that I'm about to fill in. And also, I do feel very bad for this fern. So it's gonna get a lot of water, there we go. <sighs> I've had a really good day. It's been so nice. Nothing like a good night's sleep is there to set you up. And I'm really pleased with some of the things I've done today. I went to the shop as well, went to the supermarket. Hey, I bought one of those um, bags for life because I did that thing where you turn up at the supermarket with about maybe a hundred bags for life. You know, those durable, sustainable bags at home, but none with me. So I had to buy another one. Such is life. And do you know what I noticed on the bag was some motivational quote. It says, and it's Olympic swimmer of just some description, swim against the tide. Something like that. Like be the best you can be or swim against the tide. Be yourself. That's it, be yourself. I thought I'm exhausted from such things as logos on bags telling me to be myself or swim against the tide as well. I mean, I really don't think that's good advice. I think that's really dangerous in certain circumstances. I mean, I get the essence, obviously, of what is being said, which is, you know, do your own thing. Don't be, don't fit in like everyone else. It's like sometimes fitting in like everyone else is a really jolly good idea because otherwise it's really quite tiring going against the grain the whole time. While I'm there, uh, letting off steam shall we say i am backfilling the fern hello fern ah oh, lovely name and um i just thought actually there's too much of this sort of crap around isn't there people telling us to be ourselves and you know instagram full of sunsets with make the day this the best it can ever be and yeah do you know what there's a real place for that i think it's really important but does it have to be all the time? I feel a bit oppressed by it. I feel a bit like I'm, I'm a bit inadequate. And I'm really not inadequate. Do you know what I mean? Anyway, keep oneself to oneself is maybe what I'm going to put on a bag. <laughs> 
Don't disrupt, fit in. Oh, there's a brilliant book, actually, uh, Jeanette Winterson's book, um, title, I think it's sort of semi-biographical, um, or entirely biographical, can't quite remember. <laughs> it's about her upbringing in the Baptist church by her very strict parents, but also her mum, who really desperately wanted to fit in and be normal, and she called the book, Why Be Happy When You Could Be Normal? Referencing her sexuality. Mum, I'm gay. Oh, for God's sake. Why be happy when you can be normal? Love that. Thought it was really funny. Anyway, uh, that's not what I'm going to put on a quote, but do you know what I mean? You ever see these quotes and you just think, oh, anodyne crap. Who made that up? I mean, I am worried that the next thing that we see is going to be on a bag of compost and grow as a gardener. Helping others grow while you grow as a person um, and stuff. But luckily, it just seems, I don't know, do, I don't know if you've ever noticed, you could email in hello at bitfamous.co.uk if you've noticed any changes in the way that gardening products are talked about or referenced or marketed. Because um, I think they're stuck in the 1950s, frankly, and there's no reference to the modern world about apart from this is compost put it in your garden in fact I bought a, a new bag of compost which I'm going to focus in another episode and it's seedling compost I never thought I'd be buying such things you probably heard me say put it in the ground and it'll grow it's not always the case actually <laughs> so in a bid to sort of like reduce the variables on f failure um do I mean variable I was never very good at science um reduce the factors that go against you when it comes to gardening i've run out of soil why is all the soil gone i took all the soil out of the hole i put an item in a hole and i can't find the soil to go back in the hole well that's because it's around this massive clump of grass let's see what happens if i shake it off <laughs> um anyway yeah so i on that bag of seedling compost, there's nothing that references the human psyche in a development mode. There's nothing that says disrupt, change, animate, or anything crappy like that. I was going to say bullshit, but that's probably not allowed on a podcast. I don't know. You're going to beep it out. Should we beep that one out? Anyway, it is, isn't it? And then you go buy a bag in a supermarket and it says swim against the tide. And I'm just picking up some baked beans for my tea. No, I'm not going to swim against the tide. I'm exhausted. I'm 51. <laughs> anyway, you'll be glad to know I've had a great day. The fern is in the ground. Joey is still staring at whatever is interesting him. And all is well. I think we could probably call that a night, couldn't we? Good night. <laughs>